sent another car by our friends at Partridge BMW. Here it is. I'm quite excited about it. Firstly, because it's the all new M240i, but secondly, because, well, look at that color. Don't call it purple. It's not purple. It's Thunder Knight. Welcome on board to the new BMW M240i, an exciting new car to the BMW range for a myriad of reasons. Now, first things first, this is a brand new car. Quite excited by that. A lot of people, me included, when this car was first mentioned or first uttered last year, suspected that this would be the existing two series that's effectively been given a bit of a facelift, maybe a new engine and some new mapping technology to make it ludicrously fast. Well, we were wrong, me included, because this is essentially a ground up new car. Now this thing is quite impressive because as standard, it's pushing out an incredible 370 brake horsepower and 470 foot pounds of torque. That's seriously punchy power. This is a fast car. 0 to 62 miles an hour happens in 4.3 seconds, and this thing will top out at a restricted 155 miles an hour. It's not the lightest car in the world at 1,700 kilos, but to be honest with you, that doesn't seem to matter at all. With that much power and that much torque coming from the engine, plus the fantastic X-Drive system, this is quite a fun place to be. Now I first drove the M240i X-Drive at the SMMT, a test day where lots of car manufacturers bring their cars together and allow motoring journalists to have a quick snapshot drive. So I had this car for about 15 or 20 minutes and in that time I thought, oh my goodness, I've got nowhere near enough time to get the full benefit of this car. So I contacted our friends at Partridge BMW just to see on the off chance if there was a chance of getting one and they delivered. Just a few days later, this glorious Thunder Knight M240i X-Drive was delivered and I've now got it for a week to see what it's all about. So I suspected, even on my very short drive, that there were going to be a lot of things about this car that I really liked and I was right. The first thing is the price. The car we're sat in right now start at around £45,000 and when you consider that you can spec up an M4 at the moment close to hundred grand, it does start making you think about it. Now this being an M240i, it isn't a full fat BMW M car and BMW will admit that. It's not an M3, it's not an M4, it's not an M5. This thing is a kind of happy medium, it's an entry level M car shall we say but it still has all the performance and features that the vast majority of people are going to want in a sporty car. The ZF8 gearbox, for example, that this thing's equipped with is what you now find in a BMW M4. The suspension and geo settings are very well set up, very, very similar to, again, what you'd find in a BMW M3 or M4. A lot of the interior trim and settings and features and buttons are also pretty much equivalent to what you would find in a BMW M4. So this thing has got me thinking, if you were after a two-door, four-seater, sporty BMW, why would you be spending a hundred grand when you can pay half the price for one of these? And I know there's going to be a lot of people watching going, well, it's a completely different product. The M4 ultimately is a faster car, a more capable car, far more engaging to drive on track. And you know what? Yes, you're probably right. And if you are one of those people that's insistent that that is what you look for in a car, then yeah, OK, the M4 is probably going to be the better car for you. But if you're not, if you're just somebody that likes pottering around on the road in something that feels fairly special, feels incredibly fast and has a lot of features and gadgets on it that would make you feel like you're quite a good driver, then this is basically ticking all the boxes. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm quite celebratory of this M240i X-Drive. It does all the things I want a car to do. Inside, it's comfortable, it's lovely, it's spacious, it drives well, it stops well. It does all the things that I would want a car to do. But there is a sticking point, and it's a fairly significant one if you were in a position where you were thinking about buying one. 
let's take a step outside. So, the sticking point, design. Now, BMW, since the early 2000s, in my opinion, have been released and, well, they've taken a bit of getting used to. The design comes out, it tends to be quite radical, but then given time you go, ah, actually, yeah, that's not too bad. Now, looking at the front end, I'm kind of getting that same vibe. It is a bit radical. Grills, thankfully, aren't huge. And they do have some clever tech, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. However, the front end as a style, I think that will be okay. That I think I'll get used to. At the back though, it's a slightly different story. I'd say up to about here, everything's fine. From here, well, to around here, that's where things start to get a bit muddy. This rear arch seems huge. Believe it or not, that's a 19 inch wheel. And yet somehow it gets completely lost in that arch. And I feel like the only way you could make that better is by putting a 20 or 21 inch wheel on there and spacing it out. But then that risks changing those brilliant handling characteristics. And if we jump to the back of the car, well, things get even more confusing. Now I'll make it clear, I am no car designer. I'll be the first to admit that. In fact, my artistic capabilities kind of end at scribbling on post-it notes while sitting on hold. But I can't work out really what's going on here. Again, even more radical now, that rear arch and that huge haunch and disappearing wheel. It looks even more ridiculous from here. And then these lights, they kind of tell me that there's a design language that's supposed to connect down there but it, it doesn't and there seems to be lines coming out from all different directions it's it's just a bit fussy and I don't know if that's something that I'm going to get used to controversies aside there are quite a few things design wise that I do like about the M240i firstly I mentioned that grill isn't it brilliant that it's not huge firstly good shape good size also this is quite clever so these vents remain closed when the engine's off and open up when you start to drive, if you then put the car into eco mode, they close again for better aero efficiency. It's quite good. Nice little gold accents in the headlights. I think those are quite smart. And in fact, I quite like this slightly bronzy finish that's seen around the car. Firstly on the grille, it's here on the mirror caps as well. And if you walk to the back of the car, it's also on the badges. So again, ignoring the main factor of the back that I'm still undecided on. I really like these slightly bronzy coloured badges. I like the fake but exhaust tips. I like them and I like the fact that it's actually got a boot, an actual size boot that you can put things in, you can fold the seats down. It's a car. Practical car. And the other thing that I really really like about this car is the interior and the driving position. This car feels really, really spacious. I kind of expected, having looked at it from the outside, that this was going to be quite a restrictive position in here. I know the 1 Series is a smaller car, but comparing it to the M135 and the M140, I always felt a bit big for those. I felt like if I was in the car and I had a couple of friends in the car, there was not a lot of space to spare. But in here, somehow BMW have created a really spacious environment, and I guess that tallies on from it being ultimately a 4 Series, it means that they've got a bit of extra space to play with, but it looks a lot smaller from the outside than it feels on the inside, if that makes sense. It's got other luxuries, things like heated seats, it's got a heated steering wheel, it's got an amazing Harman Kardon sound system, the BMW interface, just like on all the other models, is absolutely fantastic, you've got both touchscreen buttons here at the front, as well as physical buttons and spinny knobs down here in the middle, all the climate control and even radio is buttons, actual physical buttons. And I'm so pleased, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm so pleased to see that buttons are making a return. Now the other thing that is great about this car, and again it fits into that category of something for everyone, is you have got the ability to drive it spiritedly and sportily, drive on paddles and make yourself feel like you're a fantastic driver, because you are. But it also has the option, by the push of a button, to go into what's called Eco Pro. And that means that you settle down the engine, there's a remap on the engine that means that it focuses more on fuel consumption and economy. 
you get some new blue gauges on the dashboard that show you that you're actually doing wonderful things by saving yourself a fortune in fuel and in full automatic mode suddenly you've got a car that you can drive every single day which doesn't burn loads of fuel there's no hybrid option on this there's nothing electrical about it this is just a genuinely fairly economical three litre sports car I'm just ticking things off in my head tick 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 fun yes sporty yes fast yes economical yes what does this car not do So there we have it. BMW have made something genuinely very brilliant at a time where there's quite a bit of controversy about the brand, let's be honest, in the way that some of the cars are being designed and some of the cars are styled and some of the cars are shaped. This, whilst it certainly does have some design quirks that I think takes some getting used to, is on the whole a fantastic product. It's a no-brainer for me and if it was me and my money and I was in the position to buy a sporty two-door coupe, would I be trying to find the money to get 70 to 100 grand on an M4, or would I be looking at a very, very friendly finance package on one of these? It would be one of these for me. Well done, BMW. You've made something very, very good here. The crucial point, of course, before we wrap up, is that this car, this platform, is ultimately going to turn into the next M2. And for that, I'm genuinely quite excited. Probably as excited about the new M2 now, having driven this, as I am about the new M5. So, watch this space for when that new M2 comes along, because if it's anything like this, or better, which it probably is going to be, that's going to be a special car. For now, let's leave it there. I'm going to thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learned something from it. Feel free to comment and engage and let me know if you have any comments or questions. Perhaps I missed something that I didn't reference. You can let me know in the comments below. Please do also subscribe if you can. Hit that little bell notification to find out when we've uploaded a new video. And of course, don't forget that we have a whole myriad of things that you can enjoy. Lots of automotive content on our website, drivenchat.com. You can see there all of our videos, all of our photographs, written reviews by me, and of course, a link through to all of our podcasts, the Driven Chat podcast that comes out every single Monday morning and usually, most of the time, features a very special guest from the automotive world. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.